All right. So, <clears throat> this stream is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's actually, instead of uh, showing how to use D3 Mesh or doing something like that, um, I'm going to see if I can uh, show you like, under the hood a little bit as far as programming and um, kind of what I do in the background. So without further ado, let's just jump into it. Um, I have a new set of goals up there. Let me come back to my screen here. So the first one I want to try to do here is um, I want to add um, to the object browser um, the, in D3 Mesh, I want to add a new button that says hide mesh mixer. Here, I'll show you. Um, it does, it's not going to hide mesh mixer, but it's going to hide the object browser within uh, mesh mixer sometimes it just pops up randomly and that kind of annoys me so I figure it'd be a somewhat somewhat decent thing or somewhat easy thing to implement real quick um, this is the uh, the IDE that I use or the uh, programming software called PyCharm the whole thing's written in Python um, and yeah uh, kind of see what let's get my thoughts organized here so instead of double clicking the app like most people do or like you would normally do <clears throat> if it was compiled I'm um, just running the code right now in source code and that allows me to kind of test things out quickly and see if things are working the way that they should Something weird. All right. So, like usual, and I just realized I'm chewing gum right now. God, I hope I don't. You know what? I'm just gonna take that out. Nothing worse than having someone chopping gum the entire time. And I moved the mic up so people can can hear me a little bit better. Um. Okay, so I was talking about down here on this lower right, um, where it says select all. I think, you know, I was gonna, I was thinking about just adding another button here, but instead I think I'm just gonna change that to what I want this new button to be, which is um, hide mm. And so if you would click on that, and oops, this thing's up here, it's like right in the middle of your screen, you could just kind of quickly click on this button. And it would get rid of that. That's the idea. So let's see. Took so I actually kind of was a little bit prepared for this because I don't want to look stupid. And plus, there's a lot of code in here too. So it's sometimes I you'll. I've never recorded myself, but I have a feeling um, I'm just constantly going like back and forth, back and forth, missing obvious things. So I tried to make a little bit of a list here. Um, keep me organized. Keep me on task. Okay. Um, so we actually need to find uh, in the code where this button gets kind of generated and displayed. Um, okay, step one. Okay, so that's in the Dietrich Mesh GUI. I tried to highlight some of these things too to give me some uh, references so I wasn't just scrolling around everywhere um, okay um, so in the, the GUI code and this is at the top here so it's probably when it's getting like declared um, we got our, our frame uh, then we have our 
Turns out it's just a label. Um, and it's called select all. You know what though? I'm gonna comment this out and then hold shift and press end and copy. Because I might want to still use that select all button, but um, but not now. So I'm just gonna comment that I want. Basically, just gonna kind of reuse what I had here. So instead of select all, I'm just gonna say hide mesh exterior, and then we have the uh, same everything as before background. All that stuff shouldn't change. I do need to change the variable name though. I can make the variable a lot more, uh, like a lot longer and a lot more descriptive than I can this little button here. Um, so if anyone's, you know, if someone's collaborating with me on the code later on, or if I'm just trying to figure this out later, it's not a bunch of weird variables. It's just super, super descriptive. So, so I can just easily remember or kind of jog my memory. So we're gonna call this hide mm object browser toggle. Okay, that looks good. And we need to do that for the rest of this. Okay. What did we just do there? So now we're kind of adding it. It's by packing, we're binding uh, an enter key and a leave key and button one, which is the left click. Maybe the enter, because I was thinking we were like tabbing around and you get there and press enter. I don't know. Um, I think that's good. So we found it in the code here. We changed the variable names. Um, we added it to the object um, browser event handler, which I might need to kind of explore here, but forget it. Let's just stick to the task. So we did it. We found the code. That looks good. Um, change select all body text. Okay, we did that. Find command execution method for select all. Okay. Uh, good call, past Kevin. Uh, <laughs> uh, so when you do this left click here, this button one click, it triggers something. So that's what this binding is. It's binding the left click to the object browser event handler. And my methods over here, object browser event handler. <sighs> Okay, it kind of gets what's calling it, and then it's a button event. Okay. Mouse click. Okay. Um, if a Oh, okay, so it's a, okay. If it's a button event, that means it's like a not like a button on the GUI, but a button on your mouse. It's click, and then we're saying if it's a left click, um, okay, so if Change 
that out. So let me variable. Okay, instead of toggle select all click, this is where. This is where that um, any applicable command where it goes. So I'm toggle. Um, object browser. Okay, and then I'm at this. And when it says print, that's just uh, going to get output to this little thing here. So when I'm kind of doing things in the program, this will change and it'll, when it hits this part in the code, it'll display here. So it's kind of just for debugging. Okay, so when we get to this, uh, do that. And then just so I can kind of get familiar with this part of the code again, um, the visible click is, Okay, it's basically the same thing. Well, maybe that's what I put in my notes as yeah. Um, implement code, give, okay, okay, yep. It's not exactly, but it's essentially what I do for toggling visibility. I just send a keystroke, so. Let's do that. It's literally a copy here because I already made this method from before. Uh, okay, so if we, uh, if someone left clicks that uh, hide nested object browser toggle, then send keystroke, and we don't want control B, we want control I'm not 100%. This is the correct way to do this, but I'm just assuming this is right. Control Shift O. So then after, in this other one, after I send the keystroke, I'm going to come back to that. I may need to do that. I don't know why I have this here, but it's crazy. Sometimes you just have to do little workarounds and things, but let's see if everything's working so far. Let's see how many errors we have. So pressing stop kills it. I'm gonna hit play. Hey, I'm kind of baffled. That was no issue. I don't see any errors there. This is changed to hide. Now, come on, this can't be too good to be true. Let's go ahead and give it a go. What? You know, I, I probably shouldn't be acting like I'm like super surprised, but with so many different parts of the code, so many places, actually like the least parts that I'm familiar with and that I like retain are dealing with like the GUI elements and making it look nice. And cause I don't really, I mean, I care about that. I know it needs to look good and everything like that, but um, I'm, I'm definitely way more concerned about the actual functionality of uh, doing things on dental models and stuff. So. Um, I get way more into that than I do. Oh yeah, what's that? Uh, 
what was that thing I did when I was getting this set up a year ago? Anyway, perfect. I'm stoked. That's awesome. So that went a lot uh, smoother than I thought. And uh, if this is your first time seeing a stream, one thing, let's see. Yeah. Bam, I can press this little sound clip here. Makes me feel like I've uh, completed that goal. Uh, and we did. That was awesome. That was a lot quicker than I thought. You know what? I was going to do one at a time, but let's just let's move on. Uh, what's the next one here? Implement a PDF go under code button. And the reason I'm, I'm doing this coding right now instead of like showing that last RPD thing is because as I was kind of getting into doing the, the RPD design, I was thinking, man, I need to be able to see the undercuts and I'd rather have that implemented. And then I got to thinking, well, shoot, I also need, let's see, possibly a virtual extraction if I'm already kind of doing that and then um, attach items button because in my mind I was thinking and I don't know if I'm still gonna do this or not but um, but probably I mean um, but definitely not today um, with them um, with RPDs obviously there's uh, different different components to it the major connectors minor connectors clasps a um, bunch of really funky things um, a million, a million different attachments and all that. Um, so when I was kind of going through that in my head, I'm like, well, geez, I need also that kind of add item to model thing implemented at least to, to show that it can't, you know, um, put something there in case maybe you have your own, you can just drag and drop them in there and then you can just use it right away. But, um, until I get those, those models set up. Yeah, that's why I'm doing this coding thing now instead of that last little bit. So anyway, I got the first one done. Now the second one is, um, okay, show undercut. So I'm back in virtual vacuum former. Okay, so these buttons right here. Um, I kind of want to start checking these off the list. And I guess this next one is show undercuts. Block out undercuts. That's a, I got to spend a little bit more time on that one. Um, some of these are just the easy ones I feel like I can knock out pretty quick. So, okay, show undercuts. Um, enable uh, the button and pull code. Right there. I guess I don't need that right now. I'll stop it. I said in the tool code, because there's another class called DP Mesh Tool, where I kind of set up a lot of these uh, tools. And I have the skeleton for the other ones already here. I just need to like start adding them and implementing them and that's kind of what I'm doing right now um, so not label generator um, VVF VVF where are you oh look at me already <laughs> already highlighted Okay, so each one of these, um, I guess very technically, if I was just sticking to this strictly to this one goal, I'd only do this one. But since I'm literally right here, I'm just going to do it to all of them. 
Um, okay, so show undercuts, we're going to make that. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it's enabled. I think it's normal. There's a lot of weird nuances. Normal. I guess we could just run this and check that, but that's being silly. And the next thing, find a. Okay, find out where the uh, execution is going to occur. Back buttons. So, buttons that are part of a step. In a tool, and that gets taken care of in the, the GUI class. Set up menu options. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear upstairs, but uh, sounds like my uh, my almost two year old is going going buck, having fun up there. And I think for that reason, after I, even though I could probably get those next other two done. Um, I think I'm going to call it quits after the second goal and maybe go hang out with him, play around for a bit, and then come back if I got, if I got enough energy and if I feel like it. But uh, I do want to. I definitely want to. I'm just trying to balance these days. You know, balance. It's good. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> um, I could sit here all day and just do this all day. Um, but and, I'm, and I've done it. Uh, it's not it's not the uh, the best way to live your to live your life. Okay, I set up menu options. So this is kind of when it's going through each step. And let's see. So then if there's no options in that step, that's what this is saying. And then nothing basically, but then if you do, in these different widgets, and we come down here, set up a widget, and again, I think I've nicely laid out some breadcrumbs for myself. So let's see. Okay, no, no. So if that is a checkbox, that's the first type of um, step option. But we don't need any of that because it's not that. It's a button. We come down here to if it's a if the widget is a button, then which it is, which is what we're dealing with. We come down here, and we have to see what the spell name was. I forgot about that. So come back to this. Spell name was show undercuts. Makes sense. Okay. Convert to particle item. Some of these ones we've done before. Or you've seen before at least. Invert selection. Increase an outline. Makes sense. Okay. Show undercuts. How about them apples? I don't, I don't know why that's there. Because I'm pretty sure I didn't put that there um, in prep for this, but uh, maybe I, I prep, prep, prepped, pre prepped myself even, even way before. Sometimes I do that. I kind of like know that I'm going to be having certain things and I just kind of implement them. Just this, like I said, the skeleton of it. 
Okay. So show up under credits. Is that then we'll go to our magic conjured spell show under credits. So, what I'm talking about, like finding where the actual method is to, to start writing code to, to, to execute the steps to show under credits. This is what I'm talking about. I gotta like trail back through all these things. Um, Self magic conjure spell show under credits. So over here, magic. Where is it? It's like a big long list. I guess it's like a ton. Uh, not that one. It's like else if, else if, else if. Yeah, that's. Um, so that's what this is. It says um, when you're con uh, this will invoke this class and the method conjure spell, which is show undercuts. So where is show undercuts here? Let's, uh, see if I uh, look at that. Look at that. Pascal once again. Okay, so if it's that. Then self dash show undercuts. Now tell me, I did right on. I was gonna say, did I actually even make the method skeleton as well? So you can control and left click, and it'll take you to where this method is, which is just right below it. But um, sometimes that's easier, just logically to kind of follow things. Show undercut. Okay, here we go. Perfect. So I go. <laughs> okay. So to make sure that I've followed my code correctly. Um, we should see at the very end when I hit the sh when I hit the button that says show undercuts, it should print D three magic show undercuts, and that would mean that okay, we're in the right spot, and we're doing the right thing. So hit play. Okay, we got our model. Okay, the buttons are active or normal state. So if I hit show undercuts here, it should show up down there. Come on. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, it's because it, it just brought that focus back. Yes, perfect. D3 magic show undercuts. Good, right spot. Okay, so show undercuts. So what did I think about that list? Um, so get the current view. Whatever the user is looking at. So then after it's everything's all done, you can go back to the where the user was looking at. Load.
Okay, so I guess we'll just start. I'll just trust my past self and say, I'm gonna give. So we need to do that. Makes sense. Because if you click the button on D3 Mesh, that window actually has the focus. So you're gonna wanna uh, give it back to Mesh Mixer. So when you start doing keystrokes and things like that, if you're going to, it'll go to that window and not D3 Mesh. So I guess that does make sense. Um, get, I'm gonna do view thing. It's been a minute for that too. Um, load. So instead of kind of getting like too crazy on this, I think what I'll hmm, because really what I need to do is. when that tool begins, when you run virtual vacuum form or whatever, there should be like a very first prior step that says, um, before you start anything, <clears throat> get your, um, get your view and then press go. And maybe, maybe I can just kind of do that in the background on that first step. So, the very first step um, the spells that run after you press go are oh well there you go set current view but I'm assuming that it's saving whatever view that you're at right now. Set current view axis set. Current view axis. It looks like I have a global, kind of global variable here. Mode, and now I'm in current view. So, when this VBF runs, it actually runs this code. So wherever I'm looking at that model, when I first press go, I can kind of pretend like that's my, I'm. I'm asking the user to um, pick your axis of in insertion, and that should save that view. So that's already already doing that. So then, I guess it's done um, already. So then. And when I say load insertion, insertion axis, uh, all that junk, kind of what I was just talking about before, where I thought I might have to add another step in, I think I just add a little bit more text on that first step, like, hey, um, get a manifold or a manifold or non non manifold model, and also um, get your view set because 
for your um, for your access. It's kind of a quick way to do it. I probably should add another step, but for right now, just to kind of make sure everything's working okay, I think I'm just going to do it like that without even writing anything more on the step. Text for now. Um, okay, so we got our current view, and then get undercuts. So I get undercuts. I should have something similar to that um, for the custom tray anyway. So, you know, let's just copy this. Not that it's like this exact variable from here, but to reference a current view, this is how I do it. So I just need to copy that and remember that. And then show undercuts. Come back over here to my show undercuts method. Okay, give information to focus. And we have the current view. I'm just pasting it there just so I don't lose any clipboard. Oh, um, well, hold on. Yeah, so this is going to be used when I do the show, when I, uh, when we need to get the undercuts here, but when I actually pass this in is what I need to kind of find out right now. So do I have in that custom tray tool, Step. See, like all these existing spells that I've been, and I'm sorry, I'm just saying, I'm calling them spells, and I did that as a, I don't know what you'd even call it, like a readability, like um, way of kind of thinking about this just in a in a human sense um, but th there is some magic going on too um, so the custom tray step three draw the outline step four add the stops Okay, so when do I do the, uh, okay, so when you're setting the stops, the undercuts have already been done, so it's in between step three and four, uh, process tray selection. Okay, that's got to be a process, process tray selection. Same here. this exact code. <laughs> um, and let's see what this happens. So set the uh, set the view. Select all do the thing. Do the thing, invert, undercuts. Can we close that? I'm going to use this to go in back. And back. Wait, why aren't you 
pressing control all left because I don't know why, but it doesn't work on my computer right now. I have like a million like hotkeys and things going on, so I think that's just why. So on this show under pads, we do a focus and we're gonna say MM set B. I'm sure you're familiar with that one. Okay, shows up in the RAM. Wrong, I didn't have the method name right, but set cam view. Okay, so if I'm setting the cam view, I gotta throw it a uh, text of the type. None, it could be no view, it could be okay. Cool. I was wondering, like, why is there the tray axis thing versus the current view axis? I think that's again from prior kind of work around coding things. And again, once I kind of get through all of this stuff, I can actually go through and kind of make sure none of this stuff. Um, exists but uh so these are the same thing current view access and track access are the same thing that's kind of what i was wondering navigate go back and so i was going to set the the cam view right here but if we're going to use that select undercuts, I think in this method, the first thing it does is it sets the cam view, right? Yeah. That should work. It's not intuitive, and I'm going to have to go back and, and change that, but I think this works. Um, So we're, um, I guess just to kind of, I could go kind of what I was saying, or what I was just showing you before is it's either tray axis or what was the other one, like current view. Um, instead of setting this to tray axis, I could either, I could also set it to a current view. And I know in this method, we'll just kind of overwrite that right away, <laughs> but um if I changed it in this method, it would be all the same. Everything's the same. So no, I don't need this either, I guess. Um, well, that was way, way more simple. Um, <laughs> it's ridiculously simple. I maybe should have thought, I have all these little things here. And I think I got to here and I didn't finish this thought out. I was just like, okay, go ahead and go implement but I already have the method here. I think that's is it, okay. It's, that'd be awesome and ridiculous that I just spent that much time. Um, well, no, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. Helps kind of jog my memory of how the, the flow of the code works, so. So it's gonna do a mess, uh, mesh mixer focus, and then do the, uh, select undercuts and I'm also gonna, I'm gonna turn off the grid I'm gonna pretend like that first step is uh, asking me to show my, my tray axis here and that's just for the undercuts virtual okay and let's say this is a tough model too because it's got this stuff uh, when you're actually removing the undercuts, but uh, showing them shouldn't be a big deal. So yeah, like right about, it's getting kind of wonky here. That looks good. So now it's saving that, that view from the, from the viewport. 
as current view axis or tray axis. So then later on, if I'm moving the mouse around and everything, I can always reference what this view was programmatically. Dude, come on. Work. Let's pull up the uh, black box of death here. I'm going to hit, I think I have this running. Dying. Come on. Oh no. Uh oh. My my program's kind of noticing that my mouse is going over, hovering over it. So this is what I was talking about. I gotta make that run. I should just run in my system tray. Now, anytime I hit Control Space, that uh, when I have a window up that window will uh, always be on top. Assuming I didn't just break everything, no? Okay. Uh, control space, hopefully that works. Like hunting down errors is a lot easier for me because it's just like um, it's very methodical. Like okay, go to this line, figure out why it's doing this, and it, it's just so much. <laughs> and I don't like to have a bunch of errors, but um, but when you're like right now, you're kind of watching just straight implementation, and uh, it might seem like kind of confusing and hectic. Like why doesn't he know where everything is? But uh, oh my gosh, this is working. And why is he so surprised that his own code is working? Um, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> it's just, I mean, it's just so often, uh, you know, you'll get little tiny stupid errors, like you, you forgot to comment something, or you put a period where you shouldn't have, or just ridiculous things. In Python, if you don't have the right um, tabs, if it's not indent indented correctly, um, it'll... It doesn't like that. It won't, it won't even run sometimes. Actually, yeah, it won't, it won't run at all. Okay, come on, man. And it looks like it actually did use the um, the right axis from where we were looking, because now we're looking at this weird angle. And clearly that wouldn't be, from this view at least, what it's showing right now wouldn't be the undercut. So I guess that did work. Hopeful, very hopeful. Done. looks like it's done running and how about that show undercuts implemented no error 
two two things implemented no errors holy cow man um honestly that might be that might be a first for me and maybe this is a good lesson for me in that i should just kind of write out my thoughts before i begin <laughs> instead of just jumping <laughs> uh you know head first into this shit all over again uh you know it's you got to think i'm i'm a full-time dentist as well i'm doing that all day i'm trying to do this on the side and a couple different projects and uh this is already a big piece of code uh the code base so um yeah it gets it gets a little hectic and confusing sometimes so anyway that's awesome though perfect so we got the show undercuts um and what's the next one we got here Virtual extraction done. That's so easy, but I'm not gonna do it right now because, like I said, I want to go hang out with a uh, with the fam. So I hope this was cool. Oh, dude, I got a chat. I got a chat person. Oh my gosh. Hey, what's up? What does this do? First person in chat, what is up? Uh, virus sounding first name, <laughs> T-I-Z-Y-F-U-Z. Oh man, but hey, thanks for, for popping in, saying what's up. Um, anyway, um, what does this do? I don't really know what that question means, but if you're talking about this program here, it's called D3 Mesh. And uh, it's a program I'm developing that um, that helps dentists to kind of do digital dentistry. So, and I just, what I did on this stream was I went through a couple different coding uh, implementations and I was just talking about how I was exceptionally surprised how all that worked out without any errors or anything like that. So anyway, well, um, sorry I didn't see that earlier because uh, now I got to get going, but um, I'm going to be back on later. Um, maybe not tonight. Maybe, maybe, because uh, those other things are, are, I think, pretty easy to implement as well. But because um, I think once I get through these things, then I'm going to feel very comfortable um, doing that next RPD um, live stream. On, and that was the last goal, my fourth goal on that VVS uh, stream so anyway uh hope hope this hope this was kind of cool you know i don't know how many people do this and if you like watching this type of thing um maybe it'll spark some interest in, in uh learning how to program or develop software but anyway i'm talking way too much i'm out of here uh and i'll see you guys later